إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهديه الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبع هداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters It is a fact that we all Muslim, more Muslims know that Al-Quran is the foundation of this beautiful religion. If we don't have Al-Quran, there is no presence for Al-Islam at all. Al-Quran is the army, is the soul, is the heart of everything that Al-Islam stands for. There is nothing that Al-Islam calls for that is not directly pinpointed at or to from Al-Quran Al-Karim. Yet today we see a huge challenge. The Quran is challenged from all angles by different elements. Al Quran says go right, but we have 600 other sayings that go go left, go east, go north, go west, and go south. And throughout our history, as we are well, as we grow or as we are bringing children, we are not prioritizing Al Quran in our hearts. Some people have prioritized Al-Qur'an in our hearts, on their hearts, and they started misacting on the message of Al-Qur'an. The very first thing that we need to know about this glorious book is that in the 20th ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls on mankind, Ya ayyuhan nas. The very first appeal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in Al-Quran was Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaqu wa rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum wa alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls on mankind. And when Allah calls on mankind, it includes believers and non-believers. So why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call on the non-believers to have taqwa? The reason why is because we have been given a meaning about taqwa, a wrong meaning. We always say that taqwa is that you avoid be, uh, committing sins in front of Allah, but this is not the full meaning of a taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for the Quran, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ We are supposed to be helping each other on Al-Birr. Al-Birr is a name that is comprehensive of anything that is good that Al-Islam calls for. Al-Birr wa taqwa And Al-Taqwa is here the transgression, is the oppression. وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا Do not help each other على الإثمي and that is the sin and the sin is the name of anything. Al-Udwan is the transgression, animosity and everything. In this ayah here, what is the opposite of Al-Taqwa is transgression and oppression. So when we say ittaqullah, meaning do not transgress against yourselves or against others so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish you. It's not about you just performing a salat. A taqwa has got a more broader meaning. So in our lives as we grow, Al-Quran is not prioritized in our lives. Today, we hear a lot of people, they start by always mentioning the hadith first. The hadith has got a priority in our lives. From time to time, we mention what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But most of the time, people will tell you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Even today, we think that Al-Quran does not respond to the needs of anything that's going on in our lives. And in fact, that is not true. There is not a science on earth, from finance to history to education to everything that you think of, except that it has a root in that Quran there. I'll take an example, for example. The highway code when we drive. Does it have, is it explained in Al-Quran? Not explicitly to say when you see a red light stop and when you see a green light drive. It doesn't go like that. But it gives you the broader meanings. For example, oppression is haram. Also when you drive, oppression is haram. You are not allowed to cut the way without indicating. If you change the lanes without indicating, you get a sin. If the highway code says speed limit 70, And that's, it's put there because of your safety. If you drive at 72, 73, that's a sin. If you park in a place that you are not allowed to park, that is a sin. If it says a non, you've got the red light or, and you go through it, that is a sin. If you have a stop sign and you don't mark it, that's a sin. So Al-Quran 
puts, and as you can see, the highway code is all geared towards regulating the motion of people on the highway. That people know and drive safely so that everyone is safe. And the Quran is for here. That we all live peacefully with each other. The highway code drives us to drive peacefully. And so on and so forth. So the Quran doesn't tell you it's a highway. It puts the foundation and mankind when they design the highway code, they will observe what Al-Qur'an says. Al-Qur'an, for example, prohibits Do not corrupt the earth after it has been made perfect, beautiful. So on the highway, when you drive in the street and it's clear, it's not permitted for you to throw your rubbish out of your car in the streets because you are corrupting the earth. So Al-Qur'an puts concepts, general concepts that you can apply in the highway code, that you can apply in finance, that you can apply when you go fishing, that you can apply when you are educated, that you can apply anywhere. It gives you one golden rule that is applicable everywhere. For instance, safety. Everywhere you go they tell you safety, safety. It's a golden rule where you can apply it from football playing into flight, uh, planes flying. But that concept exists in Al-Qur'an. When the Quran prohibits cheating, prohibit, cheating is in everywhere. Not in this, but not the other one. Lying, the same thing. And as such, Allah Subhanahu says, "Ma farratna fil kitab min shay." We have not neglected in this book of anything. There are atheists; they have the argument in the Quran. People who are mushriks who are associated with Allah, the arguments are in the Quran. Those who are kafir. Of Allah, they don't believe in Allah, they cover it, their argument is in the Quran. Someone wants to be clean, the argument is in the Quran. Someone wants to be rich, the argument is in the Quran. If you want to be loving, it's in the Quran. If you want to be smart, it's in the Quran. If you want to be educated, it's in the Quran. If you want to develop your social skills, it's in the Quran. Name it, it's in the Quran. Over 6,000 ayat, 6,000 laws in the Quran. So, where do we go wrong? Why do we need, for example, yeah, why do we need Einstein to explain to us a theory when that theory is in the Quran? Why do we understand it from Einstein and why don't we understand it from Allah? Why when you tell people this and great scholar says this, they will pay attention. This doctor has written a hundred books and he has run thousands of conferences and seminars and he educates and he's world renowned speaker. People pay 500 pounds, 600 pounds for a seminar and I paid for that to go learn. Al Quran is Allah. Allah's words is the best book for this life and it's free. It's free. So, what is the problem? It's because we never ever. Take the time to sit down and actually let Al-Qur'an talk to us. I.e. hear what the Qur'an says to us explicitly. What it tells you. We always understand Al-Qur'an because we put filters in our ears and filters on our eyes and we read Al-Qur'an through what we want. And when the Qur'an doesn't mean what we want, we have to twist it, to twist it, to twist it until it means what we want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab unzila ilayka li tukhrij al-nasa min al-dhulumati ila al-nur. This kitab, the book of Allah, has been sent down to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that he takes mankind from the darknesses to the light. Allah says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you but nothing as a rahma, mercy to mankind. The very first appearance in the Qur'an is for mankind. And the last surah in the Qur'an is surah al-nas, also for mankind. How did we Muslims manage to make an Islam built on five pillars only for Muslims? What did we go wrong? This Quran, normally speaking, in normal circumstances, every single human on earth today, Al Quran is their book. Yes, they can't read Arabic, but we Muslims should have translated the concepts of Al Quran in practice. People would come to Islam. People crave love. People crave community, people crave justice, people crave safety, all of which don't exist in the Muslim world. Yet the Quran calls for them. Normally speaking, you are anywhere in the Muslim world, your little child goes out in the street playing 100% safe. 100% safe. Nowadays, people get scared when they go and do Umrah because they are scared of their children being kidnapped and abused there. 
people are scared of going to their homeland. When you go to home, your, your homeland in a Muslim land, aren't you scared about your children? Aren't you afraid that it's going to be marked, stone and things like that? Why do we choose? And I call this choosing to completely ignore the Quran. This is what we're doing. We deliberately, we see the red light there and we deliberately drive through it. It's because we do not respect the Quran and deep inside us, we don't truly believe that the Quran has the solutions. We speak it, we aim to find it and show it to people, but deep inside us, we are like the people who tell people that bananas are extremely tasty and nutritious, but we don't eat them. We don't eat them. This is our status today. We say much that which we don't do. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, lima taquluna ma la tafalun. Ya ladhina amanu, those who have claimed to have believed. Why do you say that which you don't do? Kabura maqtan inda Allah, it is such a high and great maqt is hatred. Maqt is when you hate and you completely reject the person. Inda Allah, with Allah, an taqulu ma la tafalun, that you say that which you don't do. It's too easy nowadays to sing every song that tells Islam is the best religion on earth. It has the solution to every problem. And we Muslims are the last people to show what Islam has brought to the world. Food for thought. I pray for Allah and for His name. 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 الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear brothers and my sisters, the Quran is a book in Arabic. For the love of Allah, do not biblicize the Quran. Don't treat the Quran as a Bible. Nowadays there is a great calamity circulating. Muslims are just writing some words in English and they say chapter this verse that of the Quran. That is haram, it's not permitted and it can lead to disbelief. The Quran is a book in Arabic. Don't treat the Quran as the, every other person has treated the Bible. We don't have the original Bibles today. Nobody speaks the Aramaic, nobody speaks Latin. We just have English, French, Italian. So the English in England here, the Quran is, has become English. And in France, it has become French. And in Germany, it has become German. And in Spain, it has become Spain. So how many Qurans do we have? It's exactly what we are doing to Al-Quran, what the people before us have done to their books. And that's why they are misguided. In the early days of Islam, people deferred. And they used to call, today, especially today when they say a sha'ir and all this is because they differentiated and they disagreed on the attributes of Allah. And they called themselves names. Today people have completely changed the name of Allah from uh, Ar-Rahman to the merciful, to Al-Karim to the generous. And then Allah is called in the name of Allah the most beneficent, the most merciful. This is a sin. This is a sin corrupting the name of Allah. And as I have already explained before, that Khadija in Arabic means the premature baby. And this is the, an animal that gives birth to a premature baby. It's called Khadija. So can I call the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a premature baby? Uthman is the baby of a snake. So can I call Uthman a baby of a snake? You see how one translating the names can get you away from where you want to go. As such, Al-Quran, you must learn Arabic. On the day of Al-Qiyamah, you have no excuse in front of Allah. When you stand up in front of Allah, why didn't you learn Arabic? You've had the time to graduate, where get married. Why didn't you learn Arabic? Why did you rely on translations and you got it wrong? And on that day, it's going to be a very tough day for you to come up with explanations and reasons and excuses as to why you deliberately didn't read and learn Al-Quran in the root language that is Arabic. And before that, you really have got to learn Arabic. There is no excuse, no save. Al-Quran is not, Al-Salat is not namaz. Al-Udhiyah is not qurbani. It's, 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 all this is rubbish. This, all this is taking the meanings of Al-Islam away from what it is. As-Salat is As-Salat, Al-Udhiyah is Al-Udhiyah, As-Sadaqah is As-Sadaqah, and all of it. Al-Wudu is Al-Wudu, it's not Wazoo, and, uh, and uh, Allah knows best. So please, 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 for the love of Allah, pay attention. Prioritize Al-Quran, everything is in the quran If you have a problem, go to Al-Quran. And I will end my khutbah with this. <clears throat> Every time you have a problem, there is one solution to a problem.
And as they say, the shortest path is the straight line. From a point to a point is the straight line. If you know how to apply this law, you can actually be successful. In Al-Fatiha say, المستقيم, i.e. to every problem, we ask Allah to guide us to the straight path to resolving our problem. That is not a problem that you have in life. If you know where to look in the Quran, you will find the solution. But we have chosen to put the Quran behind our back and put so many junk in front of us. And this is why today Al Quran is read by a pair of glasses that are dirty. Fingerprints, dirt, and things like that. It's all rusty and dusty. And I pray to Allah to open our eyes. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and fucking us.